another month, another big article of uh, a designer, a very experienced designer leaving Apple. Uh, this isn't the first one. In fact, I can go all the way down, uh, back to Gerard Williams uh, leaving Apple uh, three years ago. Uh, he left for Nuvia. Qualcomm bought Nuvia. Apple sued Gerard. <laughs> so uh, it, it's pretty ugly. And, you know, I, I worked in and around the chip industry for, for over 30 years. The, this, this type of moving uh, rock star from company to company is, is a real thing. But you know, when it, when it becomes a trend, so you have, you know, Gerard leaving, uh, you have, in this case, Mike uh, Filippo, who I actually knew when I, I worked at AMD and he went to ARM and he went to Apple, um, he worked at Intel. Uh, once you see multiple lines connecting, uh, there might be something going on. And Intel even had an announcement that a, a chief architect was moving back to Intel uh, from Apple. There is no doubt that the M1, M1 Pro, and M1 Max uh, is an impressive chip uh, in terms of performance per watt. But I'm wondering, what is it about the culture that uh, is driving people away, or is just this? Is this just um, you know getting money whipped, you know, money whipping engineers, or something like this, or? Or does Apple have a toxic culture in in semiconductors? Yeah, it's a it's an it's an interesting um, question, Pat, because you got kind of two forces at play. You've got new opportunities, right? People that have the chance to maybe step out and become a big player elsewhere, maybe get more visibility. Uh, you know, you know more and more of these big tech uh, you know players are all going to start their own silicon design, and they're going to be expanding and and offering. You get a little lost inside of Apple. That's a possibility. Of yeah. course, other possibilities are you're getting absolutely, you know, the toxicity <laughs> that can be known in these companies. I mean, look, you know, uh, I, I you can't deny the success that Apple's having with its M architecture. You just can't. You know, you and I, I think both kind of want to be bearish on it um, for a lot of reasons. But at the same time, uh, they've done pretty well and the machines are working pretty well. But like, you know, Apple is not the kind of company where many people ever get to emerge um, and become visible. And so there are some interesting places like a Microsoft to land right now where, the, you know, there's going to be some pretty big investment made and there's a chance to really rise, you know, the next, uh, you know, be the next Panos of the world and the others that have really risen up and become heavily visible for being part of driving the future. Having said that, Pat, um, Listen, I think we both know people at Apple and everybody I've ever talked to will talk about what a great company is, but will concurrently tell you what a tough <laughs> place it is to be. Uh, so, you know, there's movement in industries, you know, all things aside, Pat, the only thing that we can really count on as being constant is change. So I look at these changes and I say, you know, best of luck. Hope where you go next, you're going to be really successful and drive some important and meaningful innovation. But yeah, I mean, there might be some challenges at Apple, um, but right now there's nothing in the product to indicate this is going to be a problem for them yet. Yeah. And by the way, what I put on the screen here is Mike Filippo's um, LinkedIn. And you can see, I mean, the companies he's worked for and the environments that he's been. I, I, again, like I said, I met Mike at AMD, but I, I got a lot more time with him when he was the lead CPU architect uh, at ARM. By the way, um, you know, Ian makes another good comment is they're looking for their next challenge, right? In a way, that was kind of Gerard's uh, thing when he left. So uh, the architecture for uh, the M1, the M1 Pro, and the M1 Mac was done. And and I, I won't speak for him, but, you know, potentially that that was his his time to exit uh, uh, eg exit the company. When I get when I pull these people aside, though, they they tell me about a culture that's that's hard to get their get get their heads around and, and feel uh, comfortable with. But undoubtedly, a successful machine. I've never seen a machine that's had so much success without having a giant mistake. Uh, I guess when you're a three trillion dollar company, you can do that. You can have multiple uh, competing teams. By the way, like Intel used to have, right? Um, working on literally the same market space and then it was very kind of darwinian the best you know the best design and the best team won 
there was a major, you know, coup years ago at Intel when the team in Israel had the core architecture and the team in Santa Clara had what was called the NetBurst architecture. And the core architecture won, NetBurst got discontinued, and, and a lot of those folks uh, ended up uh, leaving the company.